When is this snow gonna quit? I'm just kidding, this isn't snow. This is an infrared converted camera and this is what it looks like in infrared. There's a reason why there aren't many infrared videos and that's because everybody looks like a ghost. I'm already pasted with that infrared. Oh, and if you're interested in what this scene looks like not in infrared, let's do a video with a normal camera for comparison. That's the infrared converted camera and this is what the scene should actually look like. This is what it looked like in infrared. This is what it looked like on a normal camera. Neither of them particularly good, and I look pacey in both of them. Back to the studio to talk about the geeky stuff. Right, quick science lesson. The colorful bits in the middle, that's the visible spectrum. That is what the human eye can see. Anything to the right hand side of that, that's infrared. Science lesson over, class dismissed. Okay, so how do you actually take an infrared photograph? You've got a few options. First option, you buy an infrared filter and you put that on your existing camera. Do not buy cheap filters. So John's got a good filter that we're gonna talk you through and we're gonna talk about the pros and cons of using a filter versus my preference would be is to get your camera converted permanently. As you can see, this looks no different from a regular camera, but inside they've removed what is known as the high pass filter that is blocking infrared getting to your existing sensor. They remove that and then they put a new filter over the existing sensor of your choosing. So why would you even consider getting your camera converted to infrared if it will only take infrared photographs? Because it's different, it stands out, it looks completely different to all of the other photographs and you might even trick somebody into thinking that it's a snowy scene. I've done that a couple of times. The third option, if you're feeling particularly romantic, is to shoot infrared in film. These are the first photographs that I ever took in infrared. These are terrible. They are on a traditional film Canon using infrared sensitive film and a filter over the front of the lens. This is the only film of infrared I've ever shot. It was a very slow learning curve. I messed it up, they're out of focus, they're not correctly exposed. So I quickly moved on to my other suggestions. So whilst John's setting up behind me, I thought I'd talk a little bit about what subjects are good for infrared photography. Clearly we are out on the South Downs in the wilderness. Trees glow wonderfully in infrared. So landscapes, the reason we went to that first location was because there was water. So my ideal infrared scene is going to have trees in it, water and a blue sky with some clouds in it. Architecture also looks pretty sweet in infrared and that is because the dynamic range of an infrared camera is way way bigger than a regular camera. Just because the infrared spectrum it works different to visible light. So I'll show you an example, the same scene shot with a regular camera, an infrared filter on a camera and then an infrared converted camera and you'll see the difference. Clearly as you can tell from my sweating nature this is not a very good time of day to be taking landscape photographs. However with infrared that is completely different. The sunnier the better. I can't say it. What is this? This, this brand of camera? It's a Nikon, master range. Tell me about the pros and cons of using a filter on a regular visible light camera. Um, pros, significantly more affordable. Doesn't mean you convert the only camera you've got to only be able to take infrared. Uh, cons, it kind of knocks your exposure value down by about 10 stops minimum. So the problem I've got right now is I'm trying to shoot that tree which is blowing in the wind and when I dial the ISO up to about 1, 250, which is really not where I want to be. I'm still shooting at almost two seconds. So I know when I get home, the results will be blurry. Right, let's take a look at some images. First up is a boring photograph of a tree using a boring regular camera. Next up, John has then put his infrared filter on the front of his lens. He's taken a long exposure of the tree again. Uh, unfortunately, because I was distracting John, he forgot to take a custom white balance the photograph is therefore very red. I forgive you, John. However, I'm not gonna sit and edit this for ages to get it looking right. So, I'm gonna show you some images that I've taken with that filter instead. Here they are. Both of these photographs were taken at Leeds Castle using a filter, 720 nanometers to be exact. 
Now let's get into the good stuff. Here's the first photograph taken on the infrared converted camera. This is straight out of camera using a custom white balance. As you can see, the majority of the trees and the grass, that's white, but it's still retaining some color in the sky. The next image I'm showing you here, I've fixed the color of the sky. So it's commonly known as channel swapping and it's where you take the orange or the red colors in the sky and flip them so that they are cool blue, much more like what we're used to seeing. If you're feeling exotic, then you can have a go at false infrared. What that means is you take what color is in the image and you play about with the saturation sliders and the hue, and then you just introduce color into the trees and the sky that is a bit out of the ordinary. You can see here I've used yellow in the trees. If you go online, you'll find red, yellow, green, blue trees. A whole variety. If you want to keep things simple, you can just convert it to black and white. I mentioned earlier that the dynamic range of an infrared camera is much higher than a standard camera. This example is not helping out my case, but you can clearly see here that the histograms are completely different for visible light to infrared. Okay, let's get back to me in the sunshine. Over to you, Ben. There are a few different companies that will convert your camera for you. I've not used any of them, so I can't recommend them, unfortunately. I have a friend who works for Canon and he's converted my camera at cost for me, so thank you. What they will also do, you may not even realize, is that they'll recalibrate the focusing on your camera because infrared has a different focusing plane than visible light, so they need to rejig your camera. Final technical point from me, your white balance is gonna be funky. So what you have to do is, with your newly converted infrared camera, you take a picture of grass in sunshine and then go into your menu and select that photograph of grass as your custom white balance. You're essentially telling your camera the grass is now white. Lenses are also a very important consideration with infrared photography. It's not personal preference, just some lenses are not very good for it. A quick search on Google and you'll find out exactly which lenses are good for you and which ones you should avoid. What is a bad lens, what you'll find is you'll get something called a hotspot. These are my three go-to lenses for infrared. First one, and this stays on the camera most of the time, is the Canon 10 to 22 millimeter. The second one I use quite a lot is the 24 millimeter tilt shift. That seems to perform very well for infrared. And the third one is a good all rounder. It's the 24 to 70 2.8. That's enough talking about gear. Let me show you some photographs. Here are my favorites. Whilst I'm here, I might as well take a shot of this tree anyway, see how it comes out. Okay, I've cycled to a new location to wrap this video up. This is a, this is a place that was shot in infrared before, so it's relevant. Next scene. There's only an hour till sunset and it's still Scorchio. The video. Anyway, where were we? Infrared photography. So as you can see from the video earlier, John was struggling a little bit because by putting an infrared filter on the front of your camera, you have to compose, get all your settings correct before you put the filter on, and then you are, you have no choice but to do a long exposure. You're talking maybe 30 seconds upwards. By converting your camera, such as this 550D that I've had converted, you don't have to take a tripod out. You don't have to take any filters. You can relax, go out in the sunshine, and take handheld infrared photographs. Okay, let's weigh up the options. Film, let's just disregard film. It's expensive and it's a bit slow. Uh, the second option, filters. Uh, the pros of the filter, the filter way of doing things is that you just keep your camera as it is. There's no adaptation. It continues to take regular photographs. Sweet. So if you're not too into infrared photography, do that. But make sure you get a good one, don't get a cheap one. The downside to using filters is that you're gonna to need to take a tripod, the, the exposure length is gonna be 30 seconds plus. 
So you are gonna, you're gonna get moving water, you're gonna get moving clouds. Depends what you're looking for an image. Let me just aim this at the scene. Despite the lens flare on this image, I just took a shot at f11 at 1 60th of a second. I got the image that I was looking for. But I paid the price for that. I can no longer use this camera for anything else. So if you go online and you type in infrared photography, you'll see a lot of people talking about chlorophyll. I don't fully understand this, so I'm not gonna go into it too much, but supposedly trees that contain more water glow whiter. So you look at an infrared photograph and you think, why is that tree glowing and that one isn't? I think that there's some science behind it. Other than that, it's a bit trial and error and that's why you need to go digital. So why have I got a jar of Marmite on a hilltop? Because this is a symbol for infrared photography. It's not for everybody. I love Marmite and I love infrared photography. As always, thank you for watching, and whilst I've got your attention, check out the video that Gordon Lang and I created. It's on long exposure photography. It's a tutorial, I'll put the link here, somewhere here. Thank you for watching, see you in the next video. <sighs> that felt like the right take, that was good. I don't know if I do love my weight. <laughs> Cut. Okay, I'll shoot that again with the microphone switched on this time. Should be a bit better. Do you like infrared photography? Seriously, IR spectrum? Why have I got a jam, a jam of Marmite, a jam of Marmite?